folks, Earthmaster here jumping in on the live live stream. It is uh, October 20th, 2020. There's that date again. 20, lots of 20s in there. 9, 10 p.m. West Coast time here in California. Latest quake up here in Alaska. As you can see, quite a bit of activity striking out there in yesterday's 7.5 upgraded to 7.6 quake that struck out there uh, near the Aleutian Islands of Alaska area. A lot of earthquake activity taking place out there over the last 24 hours. Let me tell you, um, we did see some um, uptick in activity over here south of Fiji, borderline 6.0, about a 5.9 quake right there. Uh, another deep movement quake, 4.5 there, striking well below the uh, surface there at 544 kilometers below the surface. You can see lots of earthquakes shown up there on the seismograph station there in uh, Alaska. Right now we'll swing over here to this map, take a look at all the activity that has occurred in the last 24 hours. This is just 24 hour period here, about 37 earthquakes within that region. And I know there's a lot more than uh, than 40. I don't believe the USGS is posting anything uh, um, below about 3.0 in this general area. I know they are up here around the mainland, right, in Alaska, but for this area, they're not posting all the uh, the smaller quakes that are taking place up here. You can probably add a couple hundred onto this region. Uh, but there's the latest earthquake, 4.8, well away from this area that's taken, uh, taken the, the stage here over the last 24 hours or so. This earthquake striking 42 kilometers below the surface, so down there in the subducting area. A lot of these quakes are down there, uh, downstream, if you will, into the subducting area. This uh, Pacific plate here and the North American plate up here. Kind of see the, uh, the combo dance there between the two plates. Back it out a little bit. You can definitely see it visually very active or uh, very visible there on that map. Um, so yeah, we're gonna have to watch out, see what's going on there with that uh, quake there taking place outside of that region. Uh, the activity that's occurring down here near Tonga, southwest, southeast of Fiji Islands there. Uh, like I said, the border 5.9. And uh, looks like there was a prior 5.0 there a uh, few hours um, from that 5.9, but still a little bit of activity kicking up there. We have seen a little bit quiet spell since that 7.5, 7.6 struck there in Alaska yesterday, but uh, things seem to be picking up a little bit, especially out here along the West Coast. Hawaii kicking up some activity as well there over the last 24 hours. You can see that on the map. No major movement over there, but definitely uh, staying active. West Coast, swing uh, down south here. No swarming really to report. Just a small little area of earthquakes down here. Um, near the Ellesnor Fault. Little blob of quakes there. Gonna have to watch that. Ridgecrest still showing some uh, activity there. Also Nevada. And um, yeah, still pretty active along the west coast. Idaho looks like it's picking up a little bit more in that region. Checking out the tremor map real quick here, showing the activity over the last day or so. You can see uh, movement generally uh, picking up in other areas instead of like we've been seeing over the last two weeks. They're confined mostly to western Washington there along the Cascadia subduction zone. Uh, now we're kind of seeing a general movement or tremor, if you will, in other areas south of there, especially along the uh, central Oregon coast where we normally don't see a lot of tremor activity. Um, I'm not saying it never happens, it's just not as common as what we see, for example, in Southern Oregon, Northern California, and areas north of Salem, Oregon, into Washington and Vancouver Island. This, this little hot spot right here seems to be always quiet, uh, but not so today. Activity picking up there in the uh, trimmer department, not earthquakes, but uh, slow slip trimmer along the Cascadia subduction zone. Uh, what else we got here? Yellowstone National Park, real quick, cover that. I was going to cover an, an article about uh, the Seattle Fault. I'm going to have to do that tomorrow because I do have my nephew here and it's going to take a little bit longer than five minutes to uh, discuss there. So I'll have to bring that up in the update tomorrow. Uh, you don't want to miss it because it's a pretty uh, important fault out there. I don't know if 
uh, the Seattle people even know about it. I know they know about the Cascadia subduction zone, but uh, you know, a lot of people don't know about the Seattle fault. Uh, let's see, this day in earthquake history, real quick, let's swing over there to the 20th. Just gonna make this kind of short, folks. Just gotta watch a four-year-old. Uh, on this date in earthquake history, the 7.7 .7 struck in 1986. Uh, Kermatic, Kermadec Islands, Kermatic Islands, depending on how you want to pronounce it. <laughs> just, it never fails. Something pops up. Um, also a 6.5 struck back in 1870 there in Canada. Uh, that's a pretty big size earthquake up there. Uh, looks like right around Montreal and Quebec in the St. Lawrence Valley. The shock was felt over an estimated uh, area, estimated to be at least a million square miles. Wow, that's a pretty big uh, area that felt that 6.5 for sure. So anyway, folks, I hope everyone has a good night uh, out there, kind of keeping an eye on things up north here. We're still seeing some general movement there, 4.8, and also just now a 3.4 well north of all this activity in the northern part of Alaska up here. It shows a depth of zero kilometers. I'm not for sure exactly how true that is. Uh, it's just an automatic review at the moment. I'm sure that will be upgraded or updated. All right, folks, please stay safe out there. Have a good night. We'll chat you guys later.